We're just giving a quick overview of the five units in our proposed curriculum for science literacy. Our first unit is on the vocabulary of science. Our second unit is on the logic of science. So let's talk about this. And just as a heads up, I know that many of you are wondering what difference there could be between the logic of science and the methods of science. But the distinction will be very clear at the end of the next video, so just bear with me. Now let's get to the logic of science. A typical science curriculum focuses most of its attention on the content of current scientific theories and on techniques for solving specific problems within a science. Very little time is spent talking about the historical development of theories and how evidence was used to adjudicate disputes between competing theories. And almost no time is devoted to analyzing the underlying logic of scientific reasoning. How scientific reasoning can be viewed as a form of argumentation with premises and conclusions, and how the distinction between good versus bad scientific arguments is defined and represented. This is the underlying logic of science. Of course, it's no surprise that it's not taught, since elementary logic and argumentation have been largely absent from the public school curriculum for many decades. There was a time when this was a basic component of liberal arts education, but not so anymore. Which is a shame because it's a missed opportunity. You can teach basic argument forms associated with scientific reasoning using only a handful of logical concepts that any middle school student can easily learn. So in this unit, I'm going to work through a semi-historical progression that begins with some elementary logical concepts and the distinction between deductive and inductive inferences, basic argument forms associated with inductive generalizations, hypothetical reasoning, and hypothesis testing in science, basic argument forms associated with how falsifying evidence can be represented and interpreted. I'll add some comments on how probabilities complicate the picture a little bit. And then finally, connect this basic logical material to concepts that science students are exposed to in their statistics and research methods classes, but that they struggle to understand because the simple logic underlying them is obscured by mathematical details. Along the way, I'll apply these simple argument forms to real historical episodes in science to show how they can be used to understand why scientific theories have developed the way they have, and the underlying logic that justifies why scientists can legitimately be very confident about certain scientific claims. What this material allows us to do is demonstrate how scientific reasoning is related to everyday reasoning. It demystifies scientific reasoning by showing how, in many respects, it's just a formalization of common sense that employs ordinary notions of what it means to have a good reason to believe anything. These relationships are really important to convey if we want students to internalize these principles of good reasoning and have them inform their own everyday thinking, which I take to be one of the goals of science literacy. In the next video, we'll look at our third unit, the methods of science, and talk about how what I'm calling the methods of science differs from what I've just described here as the logic of science.